He was been my great grand my great grandfather was chased down with horses and dogs, caught in a creek bed. They beat his head in with a post, right? Robbed him and left him for dead. He managed to crawl out of the creek bed, make it to his brother's house. That's where he died after he told his brother what had happened to him. And he was going back to town, trying to get back home. Okay? Uh, the rain got so bad that many of the Appalachians got on the train and left for Monroe. It was wintertime. They said there was ice that was hanging off the train. And they, they moved out of there. It was really cold. And they went up to Monroe to get away from all the people who were trying to kill them. The Appalachian remain were married into a, the local white families, or they were just too old to give the white people any resistance. So the old people and some of them, the ones married into white people, stayed because, you know, that they could be there. But all the rest of them had to leave or die. While in Monroe, Louisiana, one Appalachian started a feedlot cattle. Our people were always, they always did things, you know, they, they were industrious. All right, while bringing his cattle to market, he was robbed and killed. His feedlot was taken also, and an Appalachian child was shot while working in the field. Oscar Byer ran the guy down and made him pay for the child's hospital bill. The child recovered and provided all history of this fact. So they killed the guy that made the feedlot, stole all his cows, and then they stole his feedlot. But he couldn't even buy it for anything. My native man, my grandpa, was charged with marrying outside his race, was arrested and jailed, I think, for like two years before he went to court. Uh, he was forced to go to court with his two sons, Mac Bennett and my father, Gilmer Bennett. They were made to strip before the judge, naked, so that uh, he could determine that they were not black. Grandpa was released from jail and grabbed his kids and new wife because he divorced from my grandmother, um, Frances, and then he married another woman that was lighter in color, and that's why they got him because they thought it was a black guy with a white girl, white woman. In 1951, the United States government came again to the Appalachian. The United States Forest Department seized the land of the remaining Appalachia that lived in the area of Bayou C. They turned this into a wilderness area. All the existing buildings of Appalachia were burned. They had several houses. They had, a, a, they had built a store up on a hill. They actually had built their own water system off a spring from up on the side of the hill and had piped it to the houses and stores. And free flow, gravity flow, and uh, that, um, it's still there today. It's about 10 foot wide, about 20 foot long. It's hand dug with rocks on the end of it with these pipes shoved in there. And it has about two, two and a half foot of water in the spring water, artesian well water coming up. And they still use this today. But that's why they got all the water supplied to their houses. Um, but they came in and took all that land they burnt the houses right. Um, uh, they turned it into a wilderness area right. My great grandfather, Gilmer Boy, Boy Bowery, was in his home when it was burned. His nephew, who lived next door, whose home was also burned, rescued him from his burning house. Gilmer Bowery left for Monroe, Louisiana, to stay with Appalachians there and died from his injuries. Years of persecution made the Appalachians weary and they're dealing with outsiders. I don't know why that happened. The Appalachians were forced to adapt in, in order to survive. The Appalachians never lost sight of who they were. They maintained their communities and had informal meetings at Chief Bennett's house, my father's house. All these meetings, at these meetings, several events were planned, hunting parties were organized and scheduled by the 